Superheroes seem to have permeated our culture. You can't turn over a leaf without finding one underneath it. And some superheroes are great, some not so much. So today let's go looking over some of my favorite superheroes. Just for fun. Now I have to be honest here, I sometimes feel like we're conditioned to love only Spider-Man and Batman. And that might be true for a lot of people. It's not me though. I enjoy a lot of different heroes. Some of them become popular over the years, some of them are always popular, some you've never heard of. So today I'm going to run down my 10 favorite superheroes with the caveat that any of them over 5 could change with my mood. So number 10 is Deathlock. Now that might seem like an odd choice, but Deathlock is one of the earliest characters I ever remember really being impressed with. The first time I saw him was Marvel 2 and 1. And he basically took down the thing, which is no small feat even back then. Even though he was pretty injured in the process. Now later on we find out it was a robot double of Deathlock, but he kind of left an impression on me. I always kind of liked the guy. And then you got to consider later on, Terminator and other movies really seem to be heavily influenced by Deathlock. Deathlock, just like the Terminator, came back in time to stop a war that was taking place in his time. Did he succeed? Did he not succeed? Eh, we didn't have a world destroying war in 1990 so maybe he did. Now the other thing I really like about Deathlock is he got a huge makeover in the 90s right about the time the war was supposed to happen and what ended up happening was the brain that was put into the Deathlock cyborg was actually that of a pacifist and it made for a very interesting juxtaposition especially at a time when most of the heroes were going very grim and gritty as it was said at the time. Here you had a pacifist in a war machine, which kind of was cool. It was different. It was something to grab onto. Now, I won't say it was executed the best, but at least it was an interesting concept at a time where everybody was kind of leaning towards going in another direction. And that's what's great about comics is that, you know, you have other directions. Now since then, I don't think Deathlock has really caught on the way that he did back in those days. He's popped up here and there, and it's been interesting, but it's been nothing to write home about either, so... I still have a fondness in my heart for Deathlock, though, just because of that appearance in Marvel 2 and 1. And Marvel 2 and 1 is one of my favorite series of all time, which I will get to in a moment. Number 9, Green Arrow. To me, I have always argued Green Arrow is Batman. He just got the lesser of the wardrobe choices. Batman got black, Green Arrow got green. And let's face it, green isn't quite as cool, even though they tried to make it kind of cool on that television show. And it did, well, while that television show did kind of spiral out of control, it did give us two really good seasons of, of Green Arrow action. But Green Arrow's a lot more than that. And he's always been a very enjoyable character, very fun character. And he also had that buddy book with uh, Green Lantern, which was always enjoyable too. So, you have a double uh, double going, whammy going there. He's cool, he's tough, he's got the gadgets, he's got everything going for him. Green Arrow is just one that I have to love. I really hated when they killed him off, I loved when they brought him back. It was great. Now, number eight, Machine Man. I really enjoyed the very early appearances of Machine Man. He was a very different, kind of unique kind of character. Wasn't actually a cyborg, he was a synthetic, which most would say, hey, that puts him in a vision. But I really liked how his limbs could extend and save people, or he could use tank treads underneath his uh, biceps to roll across the floor ground. It's just was, it was a really interesting concept and it was really fun to see how different he was made and Machine Man never really had what I thought he had in those early appearances it was fun it was entertaining and it was moving whereas you know later on it just kind of got bogged down in its own devices but Machine Man still has a warm place in my heart I always love that character and I always will He's just right up there with me. Number seven, 
Beast. I first became acquainted with Beast way back in the Avengers, when he joined that group. And what I really liked about Beast was, here you had this hairy, blue guy who was a super, super genius. And that was very compelling to me because his outward appearance was very different from who he was. And that's what made him great and compelling and fun. He had some great times with uh, Simon Williams, aka Wonder Man. And he was great in the Avengers. He quite possibly could be my favorite X-Men next to the next entry. I was never a fan of his further mutation to sort of a cat. But Beast, as he was then, I was always a huge fan. And just thought he was a really, really, really compelling character. Number six, Rogue. Rogue is a character who I feel really has been given a major disservice in the past several decades. I could say that about many of the X-Men, but I think Rogue most of all. She was very compelling in, in as far as the X-Men went. She was a young girl who could not be touched. It was um, very, very compelling. If she touched anyone, she could kill them. It, it was nightmarish. And she really had a lot of stories under Claremont that showed that and I think what happened was when the decision for whatever reason was to set things back and of course Jim Lee had to draw everybody half well every woman half naked you know the guys never had to be half naked girls always had to be half naked funny how that works out Jim I'm just saying but um, I think once that happened it really lost its credibility because Here's Rogue walking around in Daisy Dukes and a little halter top, scared to touch anyone. Like, yeah, you're going to brush up against somebody and boom, things are going to happen. It's the way your powers work. You know, it was much more easy to accept when she was putting on gloves for every, every occasion and, you know, put on a full bodysuit. That made sense. The going out in a bikini does not make sense even though I know why it was done it was done to get boys interested in X-Men but still it just didn't really fly and after that I just think the, started the snowball effect with Rogue but Rogue still I really like Rogue especially in those Claremont years those were some great stories and she was a great character number five Thor, the god of thunder. I've always really liked Thor because of his power level and the threats he, he faces down. One of my favorite moments ever from a comic book was the years with Walt Simonson and Thor threw the giant sword through one of the Celestials and then the Celestial just melted the sword. It was just, oh, that was a great moment. But Thor um, always did have one of those great bunch of rogues that a lot of people ignore the wrecking crew all uh, the troll um, all you know loki they were a really great set of bad guys and powerful bad guys that could give thor a run for his money and you know a lot of people when thor's movie came out didn't give him credit they just thought oh it was just loki that's his only guy no here's a lot going on with thor that maybe maybe you need to go back and reread some comics if you think the only thing Thor's got going for him is Loki but I've always liked Thor and then a bit of cheating on my part also at number five Superman and uh, you know I'm gonna get a little I know I'm gonna get some crap for this but one thing I really liked about Superman is his humanity and I don't think a lot of people ever bring that into account that is some of the best stories is when you see Superman the alien being human and he didn't come by that natural he came by that by the way he was brought up and in addition to that it's one of the greater stories of comics that a lot of people kind of ignore is that this kid was raised in the Midwest on a farm he could have been raised anywhere and yes okay some comics have gone into that uh, Red Sun went into that what if he was raised as a uh, in the Soviet Union and you get a 
really different view of Superman that way and that is compelling in and of itself but he's also he's the gold standard he's the boy, boy in blue he literally is the boy in blue he is the big hero and he's the most powerful and you know some people say oh gosh he's too powerful he's too perfect and it's like nah you're missing the point you're missing the point that this is a person this is a human and he's still a human. He has the powers of a god, but he is still human. And that's what makes him compelling. And that's why I like him, and that's why he's number five. Now, of course, with my little cheat revealed, I gotta amend my caveat that I guess you could say these six characters could be interchangeable at any time. So let's continue on with number four. Number four brings up the Flash, specifically Wally West. To me, he was the best Flash. I Don't get me wrong, I love Barry Allen. But his time had come and he had gone. Wally had come up and he had really pushed himself and overcome the shadow of Barry. I really think so. But I think the major problem with that is, is that then once you bring Barry back, it becomes weird. And they've shown they don't know what to do with Wally anymore. So he just kind of doesn't exist, and it's a really bumming me out, at least. I don't know about anybody else, but I always really had a thing for Wally. He was that guy that was so far advanced from his mentor, and people knew it, and people accepted it, and people cheered for it, and then his mentor came back into the fold, and it was almost like everything he achieved was gone, and that's really something I think is should be explored in the comics and of course has not yet and Wally's barely been a footnote in the comics since Barry came back and it's really a shame because he was a really great character number three the thing now a lot of people talk about what brought him into comic books and superheroes some point back to Spider-Man the animated series some point back to X-Men the anime series, some point back to Spider-Man and his amazing friends. For me, it was Marvel 2-in-1. Basically, the thing teamed up with some of my favorites. Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu, Guardians of the Galaxy, Doctor Strange, Man-Thing, and just a slew of others who really became my favorites along the way. The thing really brought me into comics, and I really liked him as a character. He's another one of those whose outward appearance portrays or portrays a deeper character. He's just a regular old guy, just a guy from Yancey Street, who has incredible power and is a body made of stone. And he's fun, he's got great catchphrases, and he's really sad and really fun at the same time. I really love the thing. He is the guy I always blame, blame for me loving Marvel. It's just he brought a whole lot to me. He had his own solo series, Marvel 2 and 1, of course. And he's always been in the Fantastic Four. Great character. Number two, Captain America. Yes, the old Stars and Stripes, old Glory, the boy in blue again. Cap was, to me, just a really great hero. He was more normal than everybody else. A lot of people say he's super strong because of the super soldier serum. Actually, it just gives him the ability to be at peak performance, and he still has to practice, and he still has to exercise to keep that going. But, at the same time, he's still a wonderful character, and a real shining example of what superheroes can be. Equally, he has a few flaws, of course. His work with the shield, his storylines are great and he's just an all around really fun character I can't say enough I love Cap he's one of my faves and number one Iron Man to which I know how people are going to respond to this oh yeah you're a Marvel mark no nah. Iron Man is the first comic I ever remember picking up way back in the day and what I really liked about Iron Man was he more or less used his brain over his brawn. Yeah, I know. Batman does the same thing. But Tony Stark did it first. And Tony Stark's smart enough to put a suit of armor on to protect himself. Now, of course, Tony was vain and arrogant, but 
as Robert Downey Jr.'s portrayal showed us, Iron Man also is the guy who would put down his life to save the universe, and he will. And that was one of the things I really liked about him, and I still like about him, and why he's still kind of my favorite character. Although, I will be the first to admit, I feel like the comics have taken weird directions with Iron Man, but even still, I still love him. He's still my favorite. He's the first superhero I ever remember, and that's probably not going to change for a long, long time. So that's my list of my favorite heroes. Be sure to write in the comments who your favorite heroes are and why. For now, this is Infinite Realms. Don't forget to like and subscribe.